The House Committee on Appropriations will come to order. Will the clerk please take attendance? Chair Whitworth. Here. Representatives O'Neill, Brixie, Here. Hood, Brabeck, Here. Morse, Here. Hurry, Steckloff. Weiss, here. Martis. <laughs> I mean, Weiss, not here. <laughs> here. Martis. Here. McKinney. Here. Menser. Here. Morgan. Price. Skaggs. Snyder. Here. Wilson. Leitner. Here. Bolin. Here. Green. Present. Slaw. Here. Beeson. Here. Horton. Here. Fink. Cavett. Here. DeBoer. Here. Coon. Here. Chudy. Steel. Here. Madam Chair, you have 21 members present. You do have a quorum. Thank you. Rep O'Neill moves to approve the minutes from our September 20th meeting. There being no objections, the minutes are approved. Representative Leitner moves to excuse absent members. Without objection, the absent members will be excused from today's meeting. We will be um, taking testimony and then we'll be taking a short recess. Uh, there are a couple of our members doing testimony and they'll be back quickly. The first item on the agenda today is Senate Bill 331, sponsored by Senator Hertel, alongside two House bills in this package that are now in the Senate. Senate Bill 331 will reimburse municipalities for revenue loss from the small business personal property tax exemptions that were increased a couple years ago. This is the only bill of the three that has come through this committee, so I'll invite representatives of our local units of government up to provide insight on this entire package before voting. I believe here with us today is Judy Allen from the Michigan Township Association, John Lamacchia from the Michigan Municipal League, and Dina Bosworth from the Michigan Association of Counties. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair, committee members. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to come before you today to speak very briefly on Senate Bill 331. As the chair said, am I not on? No, you're Down. Not. You're not on. You just got to lean in. Lean in? Okay. <laughs> lean in. Okay. Um, again, thank you, Judy Allen, Michigan Townships Association. Uh, Dina Bosworth, Michigan Association of Counties. I'm sorry, John Lamacchia is um, over in energy policy, so we thought maybe we, hopefully we can answer all your questions. So we will be as brief as possible. Um, as the chair said, this is a bill that was part of a package to reimburse locals for the lost personal property tax revenue due to the increase in the small taxpayer exemption that was enacted um, in 20, at the end of 21. And it took effect in 2023. So this is the third bill in the package. Um, this bill passed originally last session, last June in the Senate 38 to zero. It also passed the Senate last week 38 to zero. So. Happy to answer any questions. Yeah, um, just a, a little bit more of a background on it. We did personal property tax reform uh, back in 2013-14. They created a reimbursement mechanism for local units of government. In that package, all your um, co industrial manufacturing personal property was exempted, and then some what we called small business exemption. So that was $80,000 and less. At that time, I mean, it's, it was 20 years in the making to figure out how to actually get rid of those personal property taxes and reimburse locals for their losses. Um, we did went through that whole process. It's a very complicated formula um, in which there are three different tiers of reimbursement for us. Um, unfortunately, when the Senate, when the legislature enacted this additional exemption for personal property for those with property 80,000 to 180,000, Throwing those calculations into the current formula to prove to be next to impossible because those calculations are based on our losses from when that first went into effect. So it went into effect in 2014. This is what our personal property uh, receipts were. So anything that we lost after that was our reimbursement. But if we had any kind of commercial growth, that threw that formula off a little bit. And that created what would they call the third tier category. So that third tier category that we get out of that allows us to be reimbursed for our losses while still having some growth in commercial in, um, income from commercial personal property. This package came kind of out of the blue. I mean, I'm sorry, this exemption came out of the blue at the very end of that legislative session. Um, and we were, you know, promised by the legislature at that time that they would figure it out and give us our reimbursement. Since then, the money has been set aside out of the state budget. The governor made sure she did that in her uh, budget process. I mean, those kind of off books, but 
Um, so the money is there. It is a carve out of the use tax. We figured out a way to reimburse local units of government that is reflective of where that revenue has been lost. And that's the process that you see here. So everything that went into effect before is still into effect, in effect. Um, that formula is still working. This is for that additional exemption. And just one more statement, madam, because I know we're in a hurry. Um, it is extremely important to local units of government to be reimbursed for tax decisions made at the state level. That is the revenue that the local units of government count on to provide their services, to provide the things that we're mandated to provide and to provide the services that our constituents want and need. Um, and so each time our revenue is cut by state tax policy decisions, we absolutely come up before you and ask for that reimbursement. And with that, I'm open to questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Representative Bowen. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me, and thank you for being here. Uh, can you uh, give me an idea what the dollar amount is that goes to the counties, to the schools, to the townships, and the cities? From? This tax. Where it's distributed to and the amounts. The estimate is $75 million, and it is distributed based on the, you mean in terms of what is going to be lost and made up? No, who it would be paid out to if it's collected and made up. It would go to the cities and townships and counties. I, I guess I, I think what you're looking for, it, the estimate across the state, and this is the best that we can do right now, the estimate is $75 million. So if we don't get this reimbursement across the board for all local units, it's that $75 million loss. Um, there, there is reporting but, that local units have to do to the state tax commission to treasury and this reimbursement will be based on what they have reported in terms of that increase in the exemption from 80,000 to 180,000 that as i said took effect this is in effect this tax year so that's where i mean treasury and state tax commission will be doing those calculations and that's where that revenue will go out based on what has been reported by local taxing entities Okay, thank you. Representative Steele. Um, I just have a comment and a, and a question. So I think that the money goes back into each municipality as a millage base, right? It's like the tax dollars collected and based on each community of whatever the millage is, that's how um, that money is distributed. I think it's kind of like piggybacking on what Ann said is, or Ms. Bolin. So that's, that's a comment, and I just, if you could clarify that. And then um, I understand that this is going into a different fund altogether, uh, I think, and I'm just wondering why it's going into a different fund, not into the Stabilization Act fund. When I went through, and thank you, Representative, thank you. for that question. Um, that's kind of why I went back into the history in the initial part of my testimony. Because that calculation for our current reimbursement for personal property tax exemptions, um, is based on what we were receiving before it went, those larger exemptions went into effect, based on where we are now and what we're collecting. That formula is based on a baseline from that year. This is a brand new exemption and is not really gonna be counted toward that baseline and it's very hard to make those numbers work. That's why we went with a separate fund for it. Not because there's you know really a problem, it's just, it's not necessarily apples to apples because that's going to skew that whole complicated formula with those three tiers. And really, I mean, that was pretty much D Treasury's recommendation that we just can't go back and do those calculations. Are there any other questions? Okay, seeing no further questions, we do have a couple cards to read in. Thank you. Rob Moss from Michigan Department of Treasury supports the bill, and Amanda Fisher from NFIB also supports the bill. We will go at ease, and it'll be about 15 minutes.
one and representative Leitner is offering an amendment to Senate bill 331 representative would you like to speak to your amendment sure thank you madam chair um, my amendment just simply uh, strikes the 1.25 percent penalty and uh, inserts one percent making it what what it is now and I move my amendment thank you will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to amend chair Whitwer no representatives O'Neill no. Brixie no. Hood no. Brabeck Morse Hurry Steckoff Weiss Martis no McKinney no Menser? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Green? Yes. Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cavett? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Schutte? Yes. Steele? Yes. Madam Chair, you have 12 yeas, 16 nay, zero pass. The amendment is not adopted. Thank you. Representative Menser moves to report Senate Bill 331 with recommendation. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckoff? Yes. Weiss? Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Yes. Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cabot? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Schutte? No. Steele? Yes. Did you say yes? I did. Madam Chair, you have 20 yeas, 3 nays, 5 pass. Senate Bill 331 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. Next, we're going to take up a few budget implementation bills from the Senate. These are virtually identical to some of the House budget implementation bills we took testimony on in September. So we'll move right to voting. First up, we have Senate Bill 507, sponsored by Senator Anthony, to allow cities that levy a city income tax to enter into agreements with Treasury to administer, enforce, and collect city income taxes. We do have a couple of cards to read in. Rob. Moss from the Michigan Department of Treasury is in support of the bill, and Tim Langholtz from NFIB is opposing the bill. Representative Morse moves to report Senate Bill 507 with recommendation. Will the clerk please make the call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckwall? Yes. Weiss? Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? No. Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Schutte? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 12 nays, no pass. Senate Bill 507 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. Next, we have Senate Bill 511, sponsored by Senator McCann, that makes one-time UAL adjustment following the $200 million MIPSERS paydown included in the fiscal year 24 budget. We do have a few cards to read in. Michigan Technical University is in support of the bill. Central Michigan University is in support of the bill. Ferris State University is in support of the bill. Eastern Michigan Universities in support of the bill, Northern Michigan Universities in support of the bill, and uh, WMU is in support of the bill. Representative Martis moves to report Senate Bill 511 with recommendation. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckoff? Yes. Weiss? Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? Pass. Bolin? Yeah. Green? Yeah. Slaw? Yeah. Did you say yes? Yeah. Beeson? Pass. Horton? Pass. Fink? Pass. Cavett? Pass. DeBoer? Yes. Kuhn? Yes. Shoot? Shooty? Pass. Steele? No. 
Madam Chair, you have 18 yeas, one nay, nine pass. Senate Bill 511 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. We now have Senate Bill 508, sponsored by Senator Hertel, amending the Farm Produce Insurance Act to alter per diem and reimbursement rates for members serving on the Farm Produce Insurance Authority Board. Representative Snyder moves to report Senate Bill 508 with recommendation. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brayback? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Stecklaw? Yes. Weiss? Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? No. Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Orton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Judy? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 12 nays, no pass. Senate Bill 508 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. Next is Senate Bill 506, sponsored by Senator Kleinfeld, amending the food law to extend the expiration date by four years for the collection of food establishment licensing fees. Representative Steckloff moves to report Senate Bill 506 with recommendation. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckloff? Weiss? Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? No. Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Shooty? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 12 nays, no pass. Senate Bill 506 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. And finally, we have Senate Bill 510, sponsored by Senator Kavanaugh, increasing the time allowed by MDARD to issue or deny a license from the time it receives a, completion, a completed application. Representative Skaggs moves to report Senate Bill 510 with recommendation. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Morris, yes. Furry, yes. Steckloff, yes. Weiss, Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, no. Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Coon, no. Shooty, no. Steele, no. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 12 nays, no pass. Senate Bill 510 is reported with recommendation. Thank you. That's going to wrap the agenda for today. I appreciate everyone's patience this morning. Seeing no further business, the House Appropriations Committee stands adjourned.